We've all been there. Preparing a meal for ourselves, our significant other, or our children. When something starts to sizzle a little too much, and bam. That pesky smoke alarm is at it again. In fact, nuisance alarms, or times the alarm sounds for non-fire incidents like cooking, are the number one reason people disable their smoke alarms, leaving them vulnerable in the event of an actual fire. But did you know that starting next year, UL will no longer list smoke alarms that aren't able to distinguish between non-fire sources of smoke like cooking and smoke from an actual fire? This is the future of smoke alarms. Welcome to Learn Something New by NFT Journal. Smoke alarms have been around for longer than you might think. Patents for the devices started showing up as early as 1901. In the 120 years since, they've evolved into the white, disc-like shapes we know today and they've saved countless lives. While many members of the public may unfortunately take them for granted and even at times rebel against them, their power is truly remarkable and cannot be understated. In 2017, a project to install run-of-the-mill battery-operated smoke alarms in a shanty town in South Africa where fires and fire deaths run rampant reduced fire deaths in the informal settlement to zero. According to NFP data, you're more than twice as likely to die in a home fire if you don't have working smoke alarms. Many times in those cases, the alarms have been disconnected by disgruntled building occupants who are sick of hearing nuisance alarms. That's one of the reasons behind UL's move toward only listing more technologically advanced devices, which aren't triggered by non-fire sources of smoke like cooking or water mist from a hot shower. Manufacturers have until June 2021 to meet the new requirements. The new requirements are based off of research that was conducted by UL, NIST, and NFPA. Not only do they require alarms to be able to distinguish between smoke from an actual fire and smoke from non-fire sources, but they also require alarms to be more sensitive to the kinds of smoke produced by burning polyurethane foams and plastics things that are increasingly being found in today's furniture and other home goods. The way these new devices work is pretty complicated, but essentially it comes down to their ability to take a closer look at the smoke particles they're picking up on. They are less likely to sound, for example, if they're picking up smaller particles, which are more likely to be produced by routine cooking than if they're picking up the larger particles that are generated by a real fire source. Now you might be thinking, what does this mean for me? The answer, at least for now, is pretty much nothing. There's nothing wrong with the smoke alarms that are currently out there. In fact, even UL doesn't anticipate smoke alarms with the new listing will be out there in the world in a substantial amount for several years until the current ones start aging out. Once that happens though, safety experts hope it will lead to fewer people disabling smoke alarms because of nuisance alarms hopefully leading to fewer fire deaths. It also has the potential to reduce the burden on fire departments of responding to false alarms. U.S. departments respond to over 2 million such calls every year, five times more than the number of structure fires they respond to. Thanks for watching. If you like the Learn Something New series, let us know. Like this video or leave us a comment. And make sure to subscribe to NFPA's YouTube channel for more great video content.